Welcome to this, the first episode of APSA Insights. Isana Cordia is the head of consumer insights at APSA CIB. Now, when you look at all the trading updates and results that have come out of South African retailers for the year 2018, it's pretty clear that it was a very, very rough year. Is it all about the economy? Or is there something more serious going on that perhaps retailers are missing out on? I suppose that's a big question, isn't it, Isan? I mean, is it, can we blame it all on the economy? Or is the world of retail changing so quickly and is so fluid that perhaps retailers are a little bit behind the curve? I think it is a little bit of both, Bruce. I think the economy is really depressed. People have less money in their pocket and nobody's disputing it. But it is as if this economy is just putting this dark cloud over the retailer sector in general and consumers are just changing the way they're behaving. Are consumers changing the way they're behaving or is consumer behaviour being changed. I'm not talking about mm. big conspiracies here, but all of us know that if we go on to Google and we search for brown shoes for the next month, mm. Google's going to be serving us brown shoe adverts regardless of how many pairs we did or yeah. didn't buy. Yeah. Now, I think they're changing because our, our consumers are clever. They know they don't need to drive to a shop anymore. It's not the days where you have to go to the mall to get something. You go online, you search your prices, the information's there. People do research. And if you're not online, for instance, you're not relevant. Moving online to physical store isn't a choice for them. It's something they do naturally. They just move swiftly from one platform to the next without thinking about it. And that's so interesting as well, because you watch lots of people, especially yeah. at peak holiday periods and things, yeah. people are walking around malls. Not many of them are carrying packets. Yeah. Um, maybe they're scouting. I don't know what the dynamic is yeah. in the yeah. retail sector. Right? I think there's a whole move towards experience-based spending. People go for experience rather than just to spend money. Um, there's phenomenons where malls um, abroad are becoming more of experience-based centers where people go for a different experience and the malls happen to be there. But it's not a destination anymore to just have fun because th there's more than enough other channels than you can go and have fun. The world of experience has opened up to consumers. You don't even have to leave, leave your house anymore. You don't have to go to the cinema anymore. You can just sit in your, in your uh, living room and, and click, click, click through click. Netflix and yeah. show Max. And, you know, it, people don't go out as much as they used to. So going out is even becoming a mission. The retailers will tell us that they do data analytics, yeah. that they know their customers. You seem to be suggesting that actually they don't? I think data is used, but merely in a historic form. What I'm talking about is data and we're being, becoming a predictive method to talk to your customers, to engage with your customers, to tell your customers why you are offering something they really need and want and is worthwhile to pay for, which is a pre predictive data rather than reactive data. Traditionally, okay, let's look yes. at the traditional retail arrangement. Yes. I need a pair of brown shoes. I go into the shops and I go into Edgar's and I might have gone to Stutterford's and I might have looked at brown shoes. I might have compared the prices. Nowadays, I might still go into those shops, but then I go online too yeah. and I go and I look at my mobile phone and say, actually, this brand of shoes can be bought cheaper at Superbalist, for argument. Well, sake. exactly. Or you might find that the exact pair is in this store and you don't go and browse through three stores to find your pair. You go directly to the store that you found online and pay the price that you agreed or have it delivered at your home. Uh, often people start in store and then go and research online. So it's not even that predictive that you're going to start online and then move to the store. So where is traditional retail in South Africa missing a trick? I think retailers need to decide who is my target market? What is, how can I form a single view of my customer? Where do they buy? Why do they buy? How do they pay? And how can I service that view more accurately by talking to them directly? And um, one of the other issues is marketing. I mean, video and audio marketing is just not the, the mainstream of marketing anymore. E-commerce is a marketing stream that's not tapped in sufficiently enough. We're, we're stuck in this interesting sort of juncture, I suppose, yeah, in, yeah. in retail at the moment, where online retail in South Africa is by far, it's minuscule. Yeah. Um, we, even the mighty Take-A-Lot mm -hmm. is three or four years away from profitability. Yeah. Um, these guys are throwing billions of rand mm -hmm. at a channel which is yet to be really proven in South Africa. Yeah. And that's quite a high-risk thing to do, what you're suggesting. 
It is, but if you don't do it, you'll be caught down with your pants on your heels, I think, because it's going to come. I think the consumers are ready for it. The, the issues that need to be solved is around uh, infrastructure and logistics, if you ask me. And delivery, yeah. And delivery, how to get the things, safety, things like that. But you've got to be ready for it because it's coming. I don't think you can ignore it. Those who move quickly and move decisively will have a competitive advantage over those that are either apprehensive, nervous or drag their heels. I honestly think becomes simpler in their own structures and what they are selling and who they are selling to and use their data to understand that their market and talk to their market specifically. Is there a South African example of a company that is more responsive than others? Yeah. In the apparel side, I really am a big fan of Cape Union Mart for a number of reasons. Firstly, they're local. They're truly South African. Their produce is made locally. It is direct investment in our economy. But they have gone far and beyond to understand their consumer. The way they look at data, the way they understand where the market's going, and the time they've invested in understanding their consumer speaks to that. But they've also been very clever in segmenting their markets, haven't they? Yes. Because I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily know that Tread and Miller, the, the shoe shop, is part of old, with the company that owns Old Khaki and K-Way. And a lot of people wouldn't appreciate necessarily, yeah. even though there is a, a similarity between poetry and yes, Cape Union. Yes, no, exactly. Example. And even the poetry market is so specific that you, you actually pin it down to a personality type rather than just a female market. So I think they have that old way um, genre that runs right through their organization on a cultural level. But I do think they are probably more progressive than most people understand from a data analytical side, from an e-commerce side. In fact, I would, I would go out and say they probably can be even farther ahead than they are, that they are waiting for the market to catch up. And if you don't catch up, you will be in trouble. Isana Cordia, thank you very thank much. You. That is the first in the APSA Insights series. Isana Cordia is the head of consumer insights at APSA Corporate and Investment Bank. More next time.